I'm Andrew Alexis, Site Chair for the Department of Dermatology at Mount Sinai West and Mount Sinai Morningside. It's my pleasure today to uh, discuss a very important topic, and that topic is skin cancer, in honor of Skin Cancer Awareness Month. So what is skin cancer? So skin cancer describes a set of conditions that occur when cells that originate in the skin grow out of control. These cells originate in the skin, but can, if left untreated, spread beyond the skin, including to the surrounding tissues, or in worst cases, to a distal site, a distant site uh, on another part of the body, which we call metastasis. Now, the specific types of skin cancer are named by the specific cell type where the overgrowth originates. So, for example, if uh, cells from a layer in the skin at the base of the upper layer of skin called the basal layer uh, develop into abnormal cells, we call that a basal cell carcinoma. Or if the origin of the skin cancer uh, are the cells that give our skin its pigment, called melanocytes, we call those skin cancers melanoma. And so this helps to, to understand why we have different types of skin cancer. Now, our bodies normally have uh, good checks and balances to prevent the abnormal uh, proliferation, overgrowth of, of cells. But in situations where um, the, the surveillance system can be compromised, such as uh, immune system uh, suppression or repeated and chronic sun exposure or damage from ultraviolet radiation, these normal checks and balances can be overwhelmed and result in the overgrowth of abnormal cells causing skin cancer. When we think about the different types of skin cancers, there are three main skin cancers that are the most common. The first is basal cell carcinoma, followed by squamous cell carcinoma, and third, melanoma. These are the big three. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common of the three, and, uh, and the good news with basal cell is that in the vast majority of cases, these are, are curable, they have great prognosis in other words, uh, and can be uh, very effectively treated if caught early enough. Um, they typically, as far as the appearance of a basal cell, they typically present as shiny or, or, or pearly-like uh, bumps, growths on the skin, typically in areas that receive a lot of sun, such as the head and neck area, the upper torso, the forearms, uh, and sometimes also the uh, below the legs, if, uh, below the knees rather, uh, if there's extensive sun exposure. Now these little pearly-like bumps, they tend to bleed easily, form a scab easily. Sometimes they sort of fall off and come back, uh, and, and, but over time persist. So these would be uh, some of the features that may, one might uh, uh, see and consider uh, basal cell carcinoma. Now, second most common type is squamous cell carcinoma, which carries with it a, a slightly higher risk of spread beyond the skin. So squamous cell carcinomas in general can be a little more serious than basal cells. But on the whole, we, when diagnosed early, they are treatable, curable, with great outcomes. Now, squamous cell carcinomas typically look like red scaly growths uh, or uh, non-healing sores. Uh, and uh, these red scaly growths might bleed easily, uh, but they generally persist for months and uh, even if, if left uh, undiagnosed and detected years, it can continue to spread. The third uh, and most serious uh, uh, of the three uh, skin cancers is melanoma. Now melanoma uh, uh, is the cause of the vast majority of skin cancer deaths. In fact, nearly 20 Americans die of melanoma every day. Uh, but the good news is, while well, as serious as that sounds, when we do catch these melanomas in the early stages, we have very high survival rates uh, and uh, can, can cure these. So early detection is key for all of these, but it's, 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 it's particularly true uh, for melanoma most serious of these three skin cancers. So the question is, how do you know if you have skin cancer? And there are um, uh, some specific warning signs that should sort of signal, hey, this is something that uh, warrants uh, evaluation by a dermatologist. And some of the general warning signs would be any spot, growth, mole that changes in size, color, shape, or overall appearance. 
or a spot or growth that suddenly becomes symptomatic, begins to, to, to uh, hurt, itch, bleed, scab. Uh, these uh, might be warning signs that would, could be associated with, uh, with a skin cancer. Other uh, potential signs are uh, what we call the ABCDs of uh, melanoma, where A stands for asymmetry. So when a mole is nice and symmetrical, looks similar on each side, that's a benign uh, feature. However, if a mole looks irregular in shape and doesn't have symmetry, that's an atypical sign, which might be a, a, a signal that this spot could be a melanoma. B is for border. We like to see moles that have a sharp border, a very distinct border that you can almost, you can draw a, a, a sharp line uh, from the, uh, right along the edge of the mole. That's clearly demarcated. If the border is fuzzy or blurred, that's an abnormal sign that would warrant uh, further evaluation. C is for color. We like to see moles uh, that have a uniform color. Uh, and so moles that have more than one color in it, more than one shade of brown, for example, are considered atypical or abnormal and might be uh, a warning sign for melanoma, so should be evaluated. D stands for diameter. And in general, uh, moles that are uh, six millimeters or less, so that's the diameter of an of a eraser on a number two pencil. Uh, anything larger than that might be uh, of concern uh, for melanoma. So anything that falls within the ABCDs doesn't necessarily mean you have melanoma, but these are warning signs that raise the suspicion and should warrant evaluation by a dermatologist to verify is this uh, potentially a melanoma or not. So what should patients do if, if uh, they suspect they have skin cancer? And so having an annual full body skin exam by a dermatologist is also a very uh, key way to prevent skin cancer. So the key to protection against skin cancer, really two main, main themes that I like to emphasize. One is, is protection. The second is surveillance. And what I mean by protection is protection against UV uh, radiation. We get UV radiation from the sun or artificially from tanning beds. And this is the most preventable risk factor for skin cancers. And therefore, we should make every effort to uh, avoid damage from, to our skin from UV. So avoiding tanning beds and protecting our skin from natural uh, UV from the sun by using sun protection with a, with a minimum SPF of 30 and using, ensuring that the sunscreen is broad spectrum. Practicing safe sun habits is just as important. Seeking the shade, especially um, uh, during the, uh, the summer months or when, where, when you are in uh, more uh, tropical or subtropical areas. Trying to plan your activities uh, in the early part of the day or the later part of the day. That's before 10 in the morning or after 4 p.m. if you're doing outdoor, outdoor activities. This allows you to avoid the sun while the UV radiation is at its peak in the middle of the day. Um, it's really important to reapply sunscreen. So if you're outside for a prolonged period of time, it's important to reapply every two hours because after two hours, the sunscreen starts to lose some of its, uh, um, its efficacy. So you do have to uh, reapply. If you are doing water sports, you go and do swimming, you go into the water, you come out, it's important to reapply after coming out of the water as well. So it's the use of sunscreen, that with a minimum SPF of 30, reapplication, seeking the shade, all of these measures add, add up uh, to give protection against the harmful effects of UV radiation from the sun. Second piece is surveillance. Surveillance is what I mean by that is uh, ensuring that you evaluate, get to know your skin, evaluate your own skin. And I recommend, and most dermatologists recommend that we do this. Uh, head to toe, a head to toe uh, self evaluation once per month. That way we're in a strong position to know what's new, what's changing. And the better we know our own skin, we know our own moles, we're in a better position to detect change, at which point we would seek uh, evaluation by a dermatologist. In addition to the at home self surveillance, there's the annual full body skin exam, which is very, very helpful in terms of being able to diagnose uh, abnormal spots, moles, growths early, catching them early so that we can prevent uh, uh, more serious cases of skin cancer. Because again, when we catch things early, we have great uh, outcomes. 
So I think some of the main things to take away and know about skin cancer is number one, skin cancers are actually the most common type of skin cancer in the United States. There's over 5 million cases diagnosed uh, of skin cancer in the United States every year. Second very important piece of information is that anyone, regardless of their skin type, whether you have very fair skin or darkly pigmented skin, um, any one of any racial ethnic background can get skin cancer. While there might be different levels of risk in different groups based on skin type and, and racial uh, ethnic background, everyone is potentially susceptible. In fact, uh, it's, uh, it's estimated that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime. The other piece that's important is that when caught early, and this is the, the good news, when caught early, skin cancer is highly treatable, curable, with uh, great outcomes. And so that's why early detection is so key. I want to recommend uh, some resources that uh, patients can turn to as far as for, for more information about skin cancers, especially knowing, well, how do you do a self-skin exam and what are you really looking for? Um, and so there's a, a large, the largest national organization representing dermatologists is called the American Academy of Dermatology. And on their website, which is www.aad.org, there's some helpful information about uh, body mold, uh, mapping and being able to uh, accurately self-assess your skin, along with all sorts of other um, helpful facts about sun protection and overall prevention of skin cancer. So bottom line is if you notice a new spot or changing spot or growth, something that uh, uh, suddenly becomes itchy, painful, bleeds, scabs, it's important not to sit and wait, but to book an appointment with dermatologist to have that evaluated to make sure um, it doesn't need to be treated with skin cancer. So during this time of COVID where we're, most of us are sheltering in place, uh, the, the question of, well, what do you do if you find something on your skin that might be suspicious uh, for skin cancer, or you're simply due for your annual full body skin exam and, and you're not able to uh, go to the office or not show what your options are. So um, let me start by saying that uh, our offices at Mount Sinai uh, Dermatology are still open for in-office uh, uh, emergency or urgent type of, of visits. So if there ever was a case where uh, a, a biopsy was needed or an in-office evaluation of something suspicious was needed, we do have the ability to do that since we are still open to urgent and emergent cases. But what we've largely done is shifted to telehealth. And with telehealth, we can really, uh, at least at the very least, triage and understand whether something is something, a, a condition or a spot or a growth that can wait until uh, uh, we are beyond this uh, New York pause uh, of sheltering in place, or whether it's something that is urgent and needs to come into the office. So simply making an appointment for a telehealth visit is a great way to uh, get guidance on whether or not a, uh, a new or changing or, uh, or uh, questionable spot uh, is something that requires further attention now or in the coming weeks when things return to a, a new normal. Um, while telehealth has its limitations, of course we cannot do a full body skin exam uh, remotely. Uh, but at the very least, we can, uh, we can give guidance on specific spots uh, that are photographed and sent to us and discussed over video uh, and be able to sort of understand, is this something that can wait or does it need to be treated right now? So I think that uh, we still have uh, great options available despite the challenges of, uh, of our uh, New York pods or sheltering in place under the other thing about, uh, you know, speaking of, of COVID and staying indoors and sheltering, being at home as we are, is that there might be a pent-up uh, demand, so to speak, for uh, uh, sun exposure once we, uh, once we are back to uh, uh, our new normal of, of not sheltering in place. And so there might be this, this, uh, this sort of uh, uh, temptation to go get some extra sun uh, because we've been indoors for, for, for all these weeks. 
And my advice is to avoid that urge. That's not to say you can't enjoy the outdoors, absolutely enjoy the outdoors, all the wonderful outdoor activities that, that we all love to do. But the key is to do them safely. How do we do them safely? Well, picking the time that we choose to uh, uh, have, play an outdoor sport, early in the morning, late in the day, much better than middle of the day. Put on your sunscreen 30 minutes before you go outside and reapply it every two hours that, you're, that you are outside. Wear a hat, not just any hat. We're talking about hats with, with a brim. So ideally a hat with a broad brim produces some additional protection on top of your sunscreen. The clothing that you wear, that matters too. Clothing can also protect to some degree against the sun. And in fact, there, there are specific clothes that have, are designed for extra uh, UV protection and are rated uh, by what's called a UPF. Uh, so all of these things together can allow us to enjoy uh, the wonderful outdoors, but do it safely.